Hello, hello, Ahmed Kanani here with another video from the Looker Studio Tips and Tricks. This one is an update and we're going to take a look at band and vertical reference lines. Vertical reference lines and bands are exciting because a very particular reason, which I will talk about. Let's take a look. This is fairly recent. It has been, I guess, less than a week that this feature has been released in Lucre Studio. I don't really need uh, properties or data right now, but we will add them when necessary. So let's take a look. We have a time series chart. A time series chart is a chart which we have a metric going over time and the x-axis always should be time. And we can see the trends and patterns of that metric over time. Now, previously in Lucre Studio, we could have a reference line. We could have the chart. This is the number of new users. Let's say that we want to show the average of new users for this time period, or we have a target for new users per se that we are trying to hit for some reason, and we want to show it on this chart. We could come to the properties of this chart and go to the style tab, and here, this one, this is all. For a long time, we had this, a reference line, right? We could add a constant value. So here, the ranges are from zero to 2.5K. So I will put something like 2000. This could be something. This could be our target, and on some days we've hit the target or actually had a new users above the target, which might be good. Or we could, instead of um, having a constant value and hand keying the value here, we could choose a metric, which could have been our actual metric, new users, and then show the average, show the minimum, or show the maximum, or things like that. So the actual reference lines could have been connected to the metric that we had on the chart. It could have been done. But now we have bands and vertical reference lines. So let's first start with vertical reference line. What is that? So previously, before this release, if we wanted to show an external event that has happened anywhere between these kind of time series, and we wanted to show that, for example, here on this day, we had a crash on the server. That's why our site was unavailable for two hours. Or maybe on this day, we started a, and launched another, a new campaign. So that's why maybe that we have more new users. Or the algorithm for Google I mean, updated on this day, so we might see a drop in organic traffic. Or anything like this. We couldn't simply highlight this point in time in a time series unless we had an external data source like a Google Sheet and we used data blending and some workarounds to do that. And reference lines were always horizontal. Now we have vertical reference lines, which are game changing in this sense. So let's see how to uh, enable them. First of all, there is no vertical reference line here. Add a reference line. So we should look for something that says vertical or horizontal. but Still, there is nothing. There is like dashed or label and things like that. But for the axis, we have left y axis, y axis, and now we have x axis. X axis is this one. If the reference sign is on this axis, it means that it should be vertical. See that? Vertical. But it messed up the chart because the value is set to 6th of August 2023, which is today. Now, our data set was from January of this year. So the reference line that we are putting here, okay, is outside the values on X axis. That is a problem. I hope that there is a new release or a feature in Lucre Studio that kind of solve for this, that allows us to adjust it. Okay, if the value is outside the range that is right now being plotted, just ignore it. We had a launch maybe two years ago. We want to put it here, but if we are not reporting on two years ago, if we are just looking at the last 28 days, we don't really want to see that. We don't want to chart to go back two years. Okay. But now let's just put a um, reasonable value somewhere in January so we can see that. Okay. 10th of January, something happens. And using the label, we can actually tell the audience what happened. So 10th wasn't really something exceptional. Let's move it to four scenes because we, I can see a drop and let's say algorithm change, right? Algorithm. So 
the algorithm changed. That's why we had um, fewer new users. Or we can add another reference line here. Number two is still, and again, a constant value. I can put it on X axis and maybe around the end of January, maybe this day, we launched product X, right? And we can change the color as well. This one could be another color. This one could be another. Color. So now we can have vertical reference. And so if the date range of your dashboard is fixed and you don't anticipate the values to fall outside the date range, you can start using vertical reference lines. They are very easy to use and uh, very convenient in this sense. Now let's remove this two and talk about bands. So vertical reference lines and bands. So what are bands? You saw that I added two vertical reference lines to this chart, but the area before them or between them or after them was similar, right? We didn't have a shaded area between those two lines. So let's say our server was down on these two days, 21st and 22nd of January, or maybe the day before and after that. Okay, so a four days, something was happening. We want to highlight this time period over this chart. And we already have a um, vertical reference line, but now we want something shaded. And these are bands. These work exactly like reference lines, right? But they shade the area between those two references. So the first line, I want to put it on the x-axis. So x-axis, and now I can set the first value, beginning value. I want to put it on, let's say, what day was? I forgot, 16th of January. So that is the first line, but the end ending value is still a constant value. I need to change this one as well. So I need to bring it to another day in January, like 20th of January. Okay, so we have our start and ending date, but we only have one label because this label belongs to the period of time. We don't have two different reference lines here. We have a range of time that we can shade using this one, which was line color. And actually it's a line, it's not line color. It's the background color of the shaded area. I, I don't know why Lucas calls it line color, but when you change it, you will see what does it actually mean? The, the background area, the shaded area. Here you can change the opacity, which is nice uh, if you don't want it to scream a different date range or time period, then you can just set this up and then you can play around with the dash or straight and other kind of styling of the lines as well. One thing that's nice is that it automatically gives it a label, but you can change it as well. So you can say, I don't know, sales campaign. So we had a sales campaign during these days and anything that you see goes up or goes down might be related. It's a very good way of adding more context of what was happening around the business, what was happening around the data so that we are seeing these trends happening in our data because that is what's usually missing from the visualizations that we create a visualization, but we know we don't know, and the user and the viewer doesn't know what was exactly happening during that date range, during that time frame. And so they either need to ask someone, why is it going up? Why is it going down? Or we needed to add a kind of commentary around any of these charts that, okay, on these dates, something was happening and keep in mind. Now, something else that I want to just share with you is that we can have reference bands which are horizontal. So I can have um, metric as my beginning value, new users, and I can have the minimum of new users here. So my first line is at the minimum, the smallest value that I can see around either here or here. And then for the ending value, ending value still, and again, I can put it on metric or a parameter. I don't want to talk about parameters. It takes too long but you can have parameters for the beginning and end as well. But it's still, and again, you can put it on metric and this time you can put it on max and we have two lines between the minimum and maximum of that value. And maybe we can now make the lines transparent, but the area shaded somehow. And if I do this, to be honest, I always will 
remove this grid. And it automatically sets the label to whatever being presented, but we can still change it to another value. That's it for today. It's bands, vertical bands, horizontal bands, and vertical reference lines in Lucre Studio. Thank you very much and bye.